Hey McGinn, good to see you. Hope everyone enjoyed the weekend. Welcome back to another week of Read Alouds. It's Mr. Lone, and I'm looking forward to the next five days spending some time with you, sharing some awesome books. Um, last week we read a book um, that had to do with science, and this week I want to dip back into that series because I think it's awesome how we're celebrating science, um, digging into uh, discovery, and I love also how this series celebrates uh, the connection of girls and women in science. So here we go with Vivi Loves Science. Vivi loved science. She loved learning about nature and planet Earth. She especially loved the ocean and everything that lives in it. That's why Vivi was excited. Today her science class was going to the beach. Vivi sat next to her lab partner, Graham, on the bus. She made a list of things she wanted to investigate when they got there. I hope we see a dolphin, she said. Did you know that some dolphins can stay underwater for up to 15 minutes? Wow, said Graham. I wish I could do that. When they arrived at the shore, their science teacher, Ms. Cousteau, said, Today, we're going to study tide pools. We might spot starfish, crabs, or even a jellyfish. Vivi raised her hand. Did you know that jellyfish have lived on Earth longer than dinosaurs and sharks? That's true, said Miss Cousteau. Jellyfish have been around for at least 500 million years. Scientists think they're the oldest animals on our planet. Sharks have only been here for about 400 million, said Vivi. Are sharks fish? asked Graham. Yes, Miss Cousteau said. Sharks are fish because they breathe underwater. Did you know that the biggest shark is called a whale shark, said Vivi. Whale sharks can be 40 feet long. What's the smallest one? Asked, asked Mia. The dwarf lantern shark, said Vivi. They're six inches long, and their bellies light up. Right, said Miss Cousteau. You'll be a great marine biologist one day, Vivi. Now, let's make aquascopes so we can all see underwater. Everyone raced over to the picnic tables, where a park ranger was setting out supplies. Graham decorated his aquascope with duct tape. Vivi glued some seashells around the edge of hers. This looks fantastic, she said. Ranger Earl led them through the dunes to the beach. Vivi and her friends were careful to stay on the path, away from the nesting birds and the delicate grass. Does anyone know how a tide pool is created? Ranger Earl asked. Vivi raised her hand. When the tide comes in, water collects in pools that plants and animals can live in. When the tide goes out, the pools are still there. You got it, said Ranger Earl. The tide is low now, so we should have lots of tide pools to investigate. Everyone work with your lab partner, said Miss Cousteau, and be sure to record what you find on your scavenger hunt worksheet. Let's look for a big pool, Vivi said to Graham. They raced toward the rocks. There's one, Graham pointed to a large pool of water. You go first. I'll record the data. Vivi peered into the water with her aquascope. Wow, she said. I think I see a, an anemone. Graham checked off sea anemone on the list. Graham put his aquascope in the water. Mussels, a starfish, a sea urchin. There's tons of, sh tons of shells, too. Vivi spotted a big seashell near the tide pool. She picked it up and held it to her ear. Sounds just like the ocean, she said. But it's really air traveling through the shell. Graham listened, too. Sounds like waves to me. I wonder who lived in this shell, Vivi, won Vivi asked. Maybe a giant crab, said Graham. Let's put it back, said Vivi, so someone else will move in. Vivi pointed at a flat rock, close to the water's edge. Let's see if anything lives under there, she said. It's an excellent hiding place, Graham noted. Maybe we'll even spot an eel. Together, Vivi and Graham turned over the rock. What's that, said Graham. Looks like a toad. Look, over here. We found a huge fish, Vivi yelled. The entire class raced over to see what Vivi and Graham had discovered in the tide pool. We need to get that fish back in the ocean, said Mia. It's running out of water. Wait, I don't think we should touch it, Vivi said. You're right, Vivi, Miss Cousteau said. Let's ask the ranger. She'll know what to do. That's a plain fin midshipman, Ranger Earl said. This fish buries itself in wet sand and mud protecting its nest. Graham pointed to the little orange circle stuck to the bottom of the rock. What's that stuff? Those must be her eggs, said Vivi. Actually, those are his eggs, Ranger Earl explained. His? 
Mia asked. Yes, the dad stays with the nest until the eggs hatch, Ranger Earl said. How long does that take? Vivi wondered. The dad protects and cleans the eggs for weeks and weeks, said Ranger Earl. Sometimes there are hundreds of eggs. Well, I'm glad we didn't move him, said Mia. You are right to make that decision, said Ranger Earl. Whenever we're in nature, it's important to look at animals and not touch. Plus, this is his home, and we're just visitors. Ranger Earl led the class along the water's edge. They spotted something lying on the sand. What is that? asked Mia. Be careful. That's a jellyfish, Ranger Earl said. Do they bite? Graham asked. No, jellyfish don't have teeth, Vivi said. Right, most jellyfish have tentacles like this one, Ranger Earl said. They can still sting when they're out of the water. Before you leave, you can each pick one shell to take home, Ranger Earl said. Just make sure it's empty. Vivi and Graham hunted for the perfect shells. Graham found a white scallop shell. But Vivi kept searching until she found something unexpected. A shark tooth, she said. Good eyes, Ranger Earl said, inspecting Vivi's treasure. Is that tooth 400 million years old? asked Graham. Probably not, said Ranger Earl, but it could be 100 years old. As the class headed back to the bus, Vivi and Graham took one last look at the ocean. I think I see a shark, Graham shouted. Just then something big jumped out of the water. It's a dolphin, said Vivi. No, a whole dolphin family. Vivi smiled. She loved field trips in the ocean, and she loved science best of all. So boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that story. I hope you, um, you know, lean towards some science and some discovery. Let your mind um, be filled up with new information, new things that you learn. Always be curious, and we'll be back with another read aloud tomorrow. Have a good one, again.